this is just to give you a brief um, explanation of what uh, the outline of the dive academy entails. Um, if it's something for you that you'd be interested in, this is the first segment. Uh, it's an introduction, an outline of the academy, and it's going to have the, um, the fitness portion of it. Basically, the way the outline is, is uh, every student that comes in is, does a health and fitness uh, section and does a leadership skills. It's a foundation of all the programs um, that's associated with this academy. Um, so is aquatics. Um, so when they come in, they register, um, they'll begin their health and fitness and their leadership. Uh, they'll be working in a fitness studio. Um, next is uh, they'll learn about the aquatic realm and the history of diving. That will be the next stage. Um, there is actually five stages total. Um, and this is also the first one to get the trident symbol. Um, there's these little symbols that are on their shirts that they wear. Um, next is the uh, snorkeling and free diving um, and an introduction to scuba. They get their first wave um, when they get to this level. Um, every portion of these from here on, um, you have a classroom, pool, and then lake or ocean where it's open water. That's the way the uh, structure works um, for the class. Um, you have three portions of it or three segments. They go from class, pool, then out in the open water. Um, so snorkeling, free diving, same thing. Uh, introduction to scuba. Basically the introduction is the, um, the equipment, learning the equipment, and doing an introduction dive. Um, second uh, wave, um, they're going to get uh, see the future of diving, intro to commercial ops, and then advance to rescue diver. And the final would be dive master level. Okay, the dive master level is the uh, professional level. Um, each student basically will do an internship uh, where they will learn and actually practice the skills of what they need to do to be a supervisor in diving. Basically, for those that do not know, the dive master is basically a supervisor. Um, he's there just to make sure that everything goes okay. Um, usually when you have a class, like right here, this would be the instructor. These are the students. Um, they're doing the exercises underwater. The dive master would be swimming around, checking their equipment, looking up and down, just making sure everything goes smooth. Um, he's the eyes and ears of the instructor. The instructor basically will do the outline and the teaching. The dive master will be doing all of the uh, supervising. Um, and that is it. Um, just being a professional basically just means you get paid to do what you do. Um, but there is a code of conduct that you follow that we'll be covering up in the leadership skills. So that make, just to assure that all the students um, are, have the best training they can get. And that will be the third wave and the final. For the health and fitness portion of it, um, like I said, we'll be using a training studio. Um, the website address is trans-hf.com. Um, you would go to the THF side. You click on here and then you just click on the CDA at the top or just follow the links if you want to see more about diving. Um, a lot of the equipment we'll be using is power systems, York Barbell, you know, Everlast, Ivanko, PowerTech and Tough Stuff. All this equipment is in there um, for the health and fitness. And I'll be doing a lot of personal training, getting a health plan down, get them in as best shape as we can um, and make them really good athletes as well. Um, have a library of books, all from Human Kinetics. Um, you can check out their websites, do a Google search on them. Um, also have a uh, library of videos. Unfortunately, many videos that are out there for the um, health and fitness or human body uh, doesn't really show you the value of, uh, of what they're really showing you or the value of what you do um, to make yourself better. So in this outline, uh, we'll be going over a lot to show you exactly how to make yourself better. Um, first, to start out with the health and fitness, I'm going to just give you a quick brief. Um, we go over the use it or lose it scale. It just basically shows your potential. Um, when you start out, you know, you learn, have a new experience. Um, you adapt to that experience. Um, your performance level increases mentally and physically. Um, and with practice, um, which some examples are resistance training, aerobic conditioning, stretching, um, your performance level goes up and you become better and you adapt to it. Eventually your body does hit a plateau after it adapts to what you're doing, your activity, and then you're going to have to adjust it a little bit, fine tune it, maybe increase your reps on your weightlifting, um, running faster, longer, um, implement some plyometrics, isokinetics, and hypoxic training, 
Um, the hypoxic training is more of the, uh, when we get into the aquatics, um, it's also used by professional athletes too. Um, when they use those uh, oxygen tents, um, it has a lower percentage of oxygen. Basically, your body adapts to it and it doesn't need as much oxygen whenever you're out running and doing your exercises. Finally, you hit another small plateau. You hit to your peak performance, um, which uh, will be MBNR visualization. This is in the Olympics. Use this a lot. Um, what you do is basically, if you're, say, a shot put thrower or a discus thrower, um, you actually will visualize yourself going through the motions and your body helps learn and adapt better to the exercise you're doing and makes you have better form. So that's basically what these are. Uh, then you hit your final plateau um, at your peak performance. Um, if you stop practicing, you'll start to decline. Um, you have no inactivity at all, which basically is all of us at some point in life. Um, you quickly will decelerate. Um, you can have muscle atrophy and bone degradation. So all students will learn this portion. I'll have a quick brief on uh, genetics, um, the body types, ectomorph, mesomorph, endomorph. Um, basically, genetics are just the way um, you are at the time you were con um, conceived. Um, really, your body can adapt over time and make adjustments, and you can overcome a lot of genetic uh, potential that you have or maximize your potential you have already if it's uh, excellent. Then they'll learn at what stages in life is best for them, what to do. Um, you have adolescence, age 6 to 10, a lot of running around, playing. You're juvenile, uh, 13, 11 to 14, a lot of impact sports possibly, uh, gymnastics, uh, martial arts um, to help your bones. We'll adjust to that. Um, and then a teenager, 15 to 19, um, you'll do some light weight lifting, not very, very heavy. And then a young adult, you can't see it's cut off here, but it says ages 20 to 35 for some heavy weight lifting, um, power lifting. Um, Basically, the reason why, you know, that you do not want to have a kid starting out young lifting, heavy lifting, is because, you know, it, it stumps their growth. It's common sense that, uh, you know, muscle attaches to bone. Um, the more uh, tense your muscles are, the tighter they are, they don't let your bones grow at the rate they're supposed to. So you're supposed to wait till the last growth spurt of a child before they start really heavy weight lifting or will stump their growth. Energy use is another um, segment again nutrition is what uh, the students will learn um, again this is just a, a brief uh, outline of it um, explain how food equals calories calories equals heat heat equals energy um, simple carbs like sugar is mainly burned off glucose by your brain um, then you have complex carbs and then you have fats and protein um, complex carbs are just carbs basically has a uh, gives you a higher intensity with a moderate duration Fats give you a, uh, a longer duration, but not as much of a, a intensity uh, of energy. And the proteins are mainly for recovery. Um, you'll see again in the next slide. And just to kind of give a, a visual, which a lot of slides and presentations uh, that they learn, again, the students learn the value of uh, nutrition. They learn the value of exercise. Um, they learn how to apply it, how to manipulate it, how to make themselves better athletes. Um, and, and better healthy overall. Um, you have your immediate energy, which is your stored uh, CP, CP, which is your ATP. Um, you have your uh, stored digested glucose um, for immediate energy. Then you have short-term energy, which is uh, the carbs and fats. Um, as you see, I, I use these little fire symbols for the heat. As the heat gets lower, smaller for long-term energy, it's like the little small flame that burns for a while. <coughs> They're going to learn how to read nutrition labels. Um, you have uh, basically to point your attention towards the bottom, calories per gram. So say fat is nine, nine calories per gram, seven grams of fat. You have nine times seven, 63 calories of fat energy. Carbohydrates is four. All, this is all the same um, for every food, everything you eat, it's always the same. The only thing that changes by label and by what you eat is the labels up here, the information on top. All the way this, this is outlined is regulated by the USDA. Um, every manufacturer of food products that uh, or has to deal with in the nutrition industry has to have this label outlined exactly the same. 
it's so detailed. If you go on the USDA, you can find their the regulation. It even has to have these thick bars. Um, the way it's outlined, the order it is. So this is always the same. And you have, let's see, carbohydrates, 24 grams. So you have calories per gram is 4, 4 times 24, 96 calories of carb energy, and so on. So just to teach how to read, protein is 4. And again, you have your carbs for your activity. It's good for running, thinking, because the brain's glucose. Um, jogging, high energy. Speed walking, how to burn off fat. Burn off carbs, burn off fat. And then, of course, recovery, which is cut off at the bottom. You can't really see it, but it's uh, the protein. Transitioning, to go through transitioning. You have a current level, which you're sitting at a plateau, basically where you're at. Uh, if you're not improving, you're not uh, really declining, unless you might be declining. If you were an athlete at one time or active, and now you're not, you could be at a stage where you're actually declining. Um, and basically, um, this is to teach how your body adjusts um, over time. You have to come up with a new prescription or a new uh, plan, whatever you're doing in an exercise program, after your body adjusts, after you hit a plateau, then you go through time again with your program, and then you hit another plateau, and you just have to adjust your program again. So it just shows how your body changes as it goes down. You get in better shape, you uh, lose weight, then you're actually going to have to do more activity to keep it up. You keep doing the same activity, you're just going to hit a plateau. Just to give an idea. And you can't see the bottom here because it's cut off again, but this is your margin. Um, Again, it's explained to the students that whenever you learn something, um, you have like a big, it's almost like a, a scale here. You have all this margin. Um, you're trying to adjust to what you're learning or what you're uh, doing. It's a new activity, uh, mentally and physically. Um, you start to fine tune yourself. Um, you come up and you have a smaller margin as you fine tune. You're learning, you're learning, and then you adapt, and now you have it down perfect. You're, you're just even. You're not, you're, you're not going back and forth. There's no more margin. Um, and you adapted to the activity. Um, the way our body does adapt when we go through transitions, um, you have an unforgettable experience. Again, here's the time duration and intensity, same as the other scale. Um, again, you can pause this or rewind it to see. Um, you have where you can hit a lot of plateaus in here, or if the intensity is really bad, your, your body will just adapt to it. And then, of course, where a permanent change, um, say we're talking years and high intensity, whether it's a very stressful, stressful life or um, a lot of physical activity, your body adjusts to it permanently. And then here's just an example at the bottom. is an uh, example, you have hormones that are released to your bloodstream, goes down to your heart, hits the heart, goes out to the body. Um, this is just a new experience. This is your body's reaction. Um, and again, over time, your body adapts to it. Um, the students will learn how the body naturally um, is made up as far as your, your muscle fibers go. 52% slow twitch, 13% um, fast twitch, and you have 33% combination of both. Uh, the, what's going to be used as examples, marathon runners. Marathon runners' bodies have adapted and actually have changed over time, and they actually have their more of the oxidative uh, slow twitch that has more uh, oxygen-carrying fibers in them. Um, even more so than uh, what the body is normally made up of. Again, this is to show the value of exercise and uh, of your body, how you can uh, adapt and manipulate your body but with exercise to perform. They get to see how a muscle contracts, um, just go through um, the steps. Um, this actually is to help them understand um, with practice and with health and how you can even um, what studies show that uh, you can actually have a faster reaction times um, in sports, baseball, football, whatever, your faster reaction times, and that'll be covered. Performance levels, um, again, there's power, strength, and endurance, and here's your, your workout scale that they go by. I'm running out of time here, so I'm going to have to really cut this quick. Um, power, like all your muscle fibers at once you're using, strength, just a few, then the others kick in over time. And then endurance of small fibers at once. Um, it's just a visual, give them a, an idea. And the endurance levels, and the performance levels again, strength and power. 
and then core strength the foundation we'll cover that your range of motion joints and then again uh, 